Brooks Lindsay, a 25-year-old soldier in the 114th Field Artillery Regiment, 2nd Battalion of the Mississippi National Guard, had always dreamed of serving in the military. From his childhood days in Jackson, Mississippi, Brooks had been captivated by the idea of becoming a soldier. He was an emotional and passionate individual, traits that would later play a significant role in his life. In 2015, Brooks met Haley Wilson, the woman who would soon become the love of his life. From the moment they met, they felt an undeniable connection, as though they were destined to be together. Their love blossomed quickly, and by November 2017, they had tied the knot, eager to start their life together as husband and wife. Not long after their wedding, the Lindsays received another unexpected but joyous piece of news. Haley was pregnant. The couple was over the moon, though they hadn't anticipated starting a family so soon. The prospect of holding their first child in their arms within just nine months filled them with excitement and anticipation. As soon as they learned of Haley's pregnancy, the newlyweds began preparing for their new roles as parents. They enrolled in baby classes and made regular trips to the hospital for checkups, ensuring that both mother and baby were in good health. It was during one of these visits that they received the news that they were expecting a baby girl. Their joy knew no bounds as they began to imagine their future with their daughter. However, Brooks' duties as a soldier soon called him away. With a heavy heart, he had to leave Haley behind, knowing that he might not be present for the birth of their child. Haley, understanding the importance of Brooks' commitment to the military, had prepared herself for his absence. Yet they both held on to a small hope that he might be able to return in time for the birth. Before Brooks departed, the couple made an important decision. They chose a name for their baby girl. They decided on the name Millie, a name that symbolized the love and joy they felt for their unborn daughter. With bags packed and hopes high, Brooks said goodbye to Haley, who was now seven months pregnant. The rules of the Red Cross were clear. Soldiers were not granted leave for childbirth unless there were complications or the mother was in distress. Haley and Brooks knew this, and they practiced the call she would need to make to the Red Cross if her condition became critical. Haley recalled, Brooks and I have been practicing my call to the Red Cross because we heard it was really hard to get men home for births, and we were told the only way it would actually work is if I was in distress. As Brooks departed for his duties, Haley continued her routine checkups alone. For the most part, everything seemed fine. The doctor assured her that both she and the baby were in good health. But as the weeks passed, Haley couldn't shake a feeling of unease. She was grateful that her pregnancy was progressing smoothly, but the thought of giving birth without Brooks by her side weighed heavily on her. Just as Haley and Brooks were coming to terms with the likelihood that he wouldn't make it home in time for the birth, their lives took an unexpected turn. During a routine doctor's visit, Haley received startling news. She had developed preeclampsia, a condition characterized by dangerously high blood pressure that could harm both her and the baby. The doctor told her that the baby was under stress and that they needed to induce labor immediately. Haley was instructed to go to the hospital within the hour. Her emotions were a whirlwind as she processed the news. She called Brooks to inform him of the situation and suddenly, the hope that he might be able to come home sparked anew. With her condition now classified as high risk, there was a possibility that the Red Cross would allow Brooks to return for a few days. After confirming Haley's medical status with the hospital, the Red Cross granted Brooks a four-day leave. The news filled both Brooks and Haley with relief and joy he would be able to be with her after all. Brooks immediately booked a flight home, excited at the prospect of being there for the birth of his daughter. However, fate had other plans. Brooks' journey home was fraught with delays and uncertainty. He landed in Dallas and was scheduled to catch a connecting flight to Jackson. But the flight was delayed, and as the hours ticked by, Brooks realized that he might not make it in time. Meanwhile, Haley was admitted to the hospital, and her water broke early the next morning. The baby could arrive at any moment, but Brooks was still 402 miles away. Despite the delays, Brooks held on to the hope that he would make it in time. But as the hours passed and Haley's labor progressed, it became clear that he wouldn't be there in person for Millie's birth. Haley, in pain and nearing the final stages of labor, had to adjust her plans. She had initially listed Brooks as the person who would be with her in the delivery room, but now she had to change it to her mother-in-law and stepmother. Brooks, still stuck at the airport, felt a deep sense of frustration and helplessness. He wanted nothing more than to be by Haley's side, but circumstances were beyond his control. As the final boarding call for his flight approached, he faced a difficult decision. Board the plane and miss the berth entirely, or stay on the call with Haley and risk missing his flight. His mother, Teresa, understood how important it was for Brooks to witness his daughter's birth. 
even if only virtually, she decided to take matters into her own hands. Knowing that video recording or photography was prohibited in the hospital, Teresa discreetly festined Brooks, hiding her phone in her hands to avoid detection. When the doctor noticed, she initially confronted Teresa, but upon hearing the family's situation, she allowed the video call to continue. Just as Brooks was about to board his flight, he was glued to his phone screen, watching as Haley gave birth to their daughter. His name was announced repeatedly for boarding, but he ignored it, focused entirely on the miracle unfolding before him. The other passengers, aware of what was happening, tried to delay the flight as much as they could, offering their support to the soldier who was so close to witnessing his daughter's birth. In the final moments before he had to board, Brooks heard the cries of his newborn daughter through the phone. Tears streamed down his face as he saw Millie for the first time. It was a moment of pure joy and relief, one that he would never forget. Millie Fritz and Lindsay entered the world at exactly 5.23 p.m., just minutes before Brooks' flight was scheduled to depart. The entire airport seemed to celebrate her arrival, as fellow passengers and airport staff shared in the Lindsay family's joy. With the assurance that Haley and Millie were healthy and safe, Brooks boarded his flight home. The journey was filled with a mix of emotions, happiness, gratitude, and the anticipation of holding his daughter in his arms for the first time. He finally arrived in Jackson at 7.20 p.m., where Haley had cleared the room to give Brooks a private moment with his newborn daughter. After a long and emotional day, Brooks held Millie for the first time, overwhelmed by the experience. I held my daughter for the first time, and I hugged and kissed my wife, he later said. It was emotional, especially not being there for the actual birth, but to get to see her and hold her for the first time was incredible. The four days that Brooks was able to spend with Haley and Millie were filled with the typical challenges of new parenthood, changing diapers, late night feedings, and endless moments of wonder and love. Though the time was short, the memories they created were priceless. The couple knew how fortunate they were to have shared those precious moments together. One of the passengers who had witnessed Brooks' experience at the airport, Tracy Dover, recorded the heartwarming event. She later shared it, saying, when we heard the baby cry, we all rejoiced for him. I wanted to share this because I never want us to forget about our soldiers who serve us every day and the sacrifices they make. After those four magical days, duty called Brooks back to service. Saying goodbye to Haley and Nilly was difficult, but Brooks left knowing that he had been there for one of the most important moments of his life. As he returned to his post, he reflected on the unexpected journey he had taken to be with his daughter, a journey that had been filled with uncertainty but also with love and support from those around him. Reflecting on the experience, Brooks said, my only intention was to get home to see my daughter being born, but it turned into something much more than we anticipated. His story touched the hearts of many, a testament to the love of a father and the lengths he would go to be with his family, even when the odds seemed stacked against him.